welcome back to our walk through the Mass. Uh, this is part three of our walking through the Eucharistic prayers. And my name is Monsignor John Kasha. Now we're going to be looking at Eucharistic prayer two, the shortest of the Eucharistic prayers. Uh, it was based on a prayer of uh, the priest Hippolytus, who lived uh, in the early uh, third century. And this Eucharistic prayer, the basis for it, we think comes from around the year 215 or so. Uh, it's the shortest prayer and it's most often used on weekdays and sometimes uh, on weekends as well. It has its own proper preface, although because it's a, a variable prayer we can also use different other prefaces along with it. But I thought it'd be interesting just to go through it. It's a very short prayer, but uh, it contains the same elements that we saw in the Roman canon. It's just that it's not as detailed. But the same elements are there. The same basic eight concepts are still present. So we have at the beginning, the priest prays, You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall. We see the epiclesis gesture, the gesture of calling down the Holy Spirit so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the priest blesses the, the elements, asking the Holy Spirit to transform them from bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And then we go right into the narrative of the Last Supper. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. Entered willingly. Christ chose to die for us, to save us, to set us free. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Again, the same words that we heard in the first Eucharistic prayer. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And he elevates the chalice. He then concludes with saying, the mystery of faith. And again, the same three memorial acclamations are, are said. One of the three. The priest then continues after the memorial acclamation with, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Again, asking God to transform us, to make us one, to have unity. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Again, remembering the universal church in our prayer. But then we go on. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Well, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And we remember those who have died, not just our friends and family, not just Catholics, but everyone who has died in, your, in God's mercy. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We remember our brothers and sisters who have died. We remember ourselves. We ask the intercession of the saints, who have gone before us, and we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Then the priest concludes the Eucharistic prayer by the through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Following this is the Our Father, the sign of peace, the reception of communion. So you can see it's a much shorter prayer, uh, but all the essential elements are there to 
draw us ever more deeply into the mystery of the Lord and asking us to really recognize God's presence at work in the world around us. As I mentioned in the first video, there, there are several other Eucharistic prayers. Eucharistic prayer 3 is the Mass of Creation. Eucharistic prayer 4 is the Mass of Light because the first line is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages, and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Eucharistic prayer um, 5 has four versions to it. These are called the Eucharistic prayers for use in masses for various needs. And they each have a different title. The Church on, church on the Path to Unity. Okay. God guides his church along the way of salvation. Jesus, the way to the Father. And Jesus, who went about go, doing good. In addition to the, this fifth Eucharistic prayer, there are two others that are called Eucharistic Prayer for Reconciliation 1 and Eucharistic Prayer for Reconciliation 2. Both similar, uh, focusing on, the, in the midst of dis strife and discord, Jesus brings peace. Jesus brings harmony. Jesus brings forgiveness. And finally, in addition to all these Eucharistic Prayers, there are Eucharistic Prayers for children, three of them, which are found in a different volume uh, which eventually, the next time they reprint the sacramentary, we'll probably put them in here. But right now, they're in a different volume. The Eucharistic prayer is designed to draw us more intimately into the uh, spirit of Christ, designed to really help us to understand God's saving action in the world. So I encourage you, the next time you listen to the Eucharistic prayer, whichever one it is, to really put yourself into the prayer. Listen to the words. Allow the words to touch you. Allow the words to, to penetrate you. Uh, if in your own prayer you wish to take a prayer book and read through the Eucharistic prayer as a meditation, that would be a wonderful exercise for you just to take through it and just pray it to yourself, allowing the, the words to permeate your heart and just to really give thanks to God for all the blessings he's given you. This concludes our section, section on the Eucharistic prayer. Uh, and I encourage you to watch the other videos that are in the series containing the different parts of the Mass. Your questions and comments are also encouraged, so if you wish to uh, have any more questions, feel free to email me at jkasza at sjnovi.net or stop by and see me after Mass and we can maybe do a video on your question. Thank you.